first noticed that um, the, the beginning of uh, this SMA journey with Finn, uh, probably around about the age of 20 months, mm. uh, he was developing quite normally, um, you know, achieving, you know, all of his milestones and... Um, it was more Simon's parents that uh, just thought that he should be developing a bit more. By that, by 20 months, he was um, walking with a push walker, um, cruising, still cruising around furniture, but actually never taking steps on his own. So I went to one doctor who basically, um, you know, thought that he just had developmental delays, as I did as well, and you know, um, time will sort of, you know, move him on to the next stage. And um, so it was probably about two months after that that again it was you know made made aware to us that look he he still hasn't you know developed. We took him to another doctor that sort of did more reflex tests on his knees, um, and that weren't he wasn't sort of um, reacting to that. Uh, we went to the we were sent to a paediatrician, and then from there that's when the paediatrician sort of gave us a bit of an idea that it possibly could be SMA. Uh, spinal muscular atrophy, which is a very rare genetic disorder. We were sent to Sydney for tests, to for, for actual blood tests. You know, I remember going down there and, you know, there was just that hope that, look, all this is, you know, it, it, nothing's going to eventuate from the blood test that, you know, you really don't know until you get those blood tests back and basically sort of sitting in the... In, in the um, we were in with the, uh, the doctor at that stage and being told that, yes, Finn was diagnosed with uh, spinal muscular atrophy. And then, you know, once that realisation uh, sort of uh, set in, it was our life basically took a different Changed. Path. All right. Then what do you do? Where's Finn? He really enjoys coming. He's always got a huge smile on his face. always wants to um, have a go at all the activities, he wants to do his best um, and fiercely independent to do um, as well as he can. I mean one of the first things we were told was don't Google SMA. Um, because it's too horrifying. There, there would be a lot of things that, yeah. I mean, there's different types of SMA ranging from type one to type four, um, and Finn being a, a very mild type two. Uh, basically, if he took five steps on his own, he would be classified as a type three. Mm. Um, through uh, sort of continually uh, working on him to get him up standing with leg wraps. Uh, standing frames, uh, his ankle foot orthotics. Uh, we have managed to get him up onto his feet and walking, which is fantastic for lots of uh, medical reasons. The advocacy from both Donna and Simon on behalf of Finn over this period of what for any family would be some pretty confronting news and some pretty confronting issues to deal with um, has been outstanding. And that spirit of resilience uh, is one that um, not only has an impact on my desire to help them, uh, but I think has had a big impact on strengthening the SMA community and therefore getting more members of parliament uh, much more aware of SMA and therefore a much greater chance of uh, getting some really practical results uh, for the future as a consequence. We're basically told to, to well, um, you know, I'm very sorry and... Take know. him home and love him. Finn the man is uh, four years of age to, uh, and he's just uh, doing beautifully. He's, um, uh, when he first came to us in uh, 2009, um, I guess in many ways things weren't as positive as they are now. Um, Finn with, uh, is just is a go-getter, he just wants to 
get better and stronger and just do all the things that other kids do. And he's um, lucky that he has Donna and Simon uh, there right behind him. And it's really hard work on Finn's part every day of his life. Uh, and Donna and Simon actually pushing him along, making sure that he remains well. Where Finn is at the moment is uh, he's not uh, getting going backwards, he's moving forward. He's uh, cruising, he's walking, he's walking with long leg braces and uh, he's just uh, a happy, um, well boy and uh, uh, he's, we're all proud of him but it's actually a lot of hard work. I think we're pretty lucky in, in respects that Finn at his age and even earlier had the determination to want it to do it himself. So when it came to the, it's for one better of a word, the tough love, you know, come on, you've got to do this, it's, it's what you have to do. He was prepared to do it and he's the one that wants to do it. So it's not, not that difficult when you need to try and attack new challenges. For instance, trying to get a step up a stair. Um, he's quite prepared to want to have a go himself and it's just then a matter of us being there to follow follow it through and, and if he tires at any stage through it, well, it's, it's positive reinforcement and obviously then get him to where he needs to be. But, you know, the fact that he's got up, had a go, he wants to do it himself and then positive reinforcement sort of behind it has, has, from my perspective, has made that sort of development a lot easier. It's not as if we've been trying to fight it where he's just wanted to sit in a wheelchair. Okay, my pin man. Let go. Hold Carboarding, on. you know. Yeah, lies down on the carboard and let him go and off he flies and... Well, he obviously close by and, you know, holding onto his cheek. He's not scared to have a go. And in fact, he insists you try to do something that you think he might not be able to sort of handle. And next thing you know, he's sort of wanting to have a go, you know. So you just let him have a go like any other child. He enjoys things like, um, you know, what we might consider extreme to us is, uh, you know, he, he's right into and uh, he loves, loves doing the things we do. He loves feeling a part of what we do. Uh, especially when we went to the disabled surfing. Uh, he loves the water, so, you know, getting him into the water is not hard. So once it makes all what we do a lot easier, um, it's just a different way we go about doing it from when we used to do things. It's uh, just set up slightly different, but ultimately we still do what we did before. He just learns and wants to be a part of it and he does it himself. And I think where there's a will, there's a way. And we'll find that way. I got the way. Finn was fabulous. He, he was freaking out a little bit at first, but um, uh, once we got him on the board, he was terrific and uh, he screamed all the way. Once he saw his brother on the, the board as well, that was uh, a helping hand as well. Finn, with his parents and with his broader family, um, have already made a difference and um, a significant difference to national policy. Individually, I hope he has the longest life possible, the greatest quality of life possible. Um, regardless of those issues, he has already done um, something that um, most people in um, life don't get to do, and that is um, make a big difference in the life of, lives of others. To give you an example of how we we might change something about to accommodate Finn and, and at some part an interest in where he can at least be, be involved is probably rowing where uh, we row and we, we head down there with um, you know Finn's grandfather and uh, and because obviously he can't be there and with our other child Jet they row. He, uh, as an alternative, we uh, he sits in the the little tinny. You need to row. You need to row. He's got, you know, good muscle in his uh, thigh muscle. Uh, perhaps rowing could be something that he could mm. develop into, um, because it is sort of, you know, using your arms, yeah. using your upper torso. Um, yeah, you know, it just really depends on how his body 
um, forms and, and um, how progressive, you know, SMA may be. Um, you know, it might be it's a very slow onset and, um, and he'll continue to have use of uh, his muscles, you know, that he has got now for quite some time. Um, you know, again, you know, medical intervention, new therapies, drugs, um, who knows, you know, what he could be doing in five years' time, ten years' time.